I want to talk to you about the terrors of the Lord. The terror of the Lord. It's a very sobering thought. Uh, as I was going through and I was reading some things here yesterday, the Lord just, this kind of last night, this stuck out pretty late. I wasn't for sure what I was going to preach today exactly, but the Lord kind of revealed this unto me here and the importance of it. And it ought to cause us to reflect on the, on the soberness of, the, of, of this statement here, as well as other things that we see. The God that people believe today, in today, for largely this world, believes in is not the one in the Bible. Um, they neither know who he is, nor can receive his message for the most part. And it's, it's for the... One of the things that we have to try to understand ourselves and never lose sight of, and also that's why we have to preach it out there, because we do. The Bible says in Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 11, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord... We persuade men. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. That word terror is a scary word. I think about that phrase, the terror of the Lord. And then I think about that fact that God Almighty is a judge. What is this terror of the Lord? What is it? It's more than what you and I realize. It's more than what you think about. What you and I have thought about. And I guarantee you, it's totally foreign to most lost people out there and those that profess to be saved. But I assure you by the power of God and by His Word that that terror of the Lord is real. Father, please help us. Help us to go out to many, Lord, that they may hear it. May it change their hearts by the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What is the terror of the Lord? You know, this verse bothers me. This phrase brings me to tears just thinking about it. I don't like to think about that terror of the Lord. Because when you start to think about it, there's a lot of people that are going to feel this terror. They're going to feel this terror of the Lord. In Scripture, the Bible, the Bible gives the definition of the terror of the Lord as the judgment of God, because God is a judge. God is a righteous judge. He says in, in verse number 10, in 2 Corinthians 5, 10, he says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, and every one may, that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done whether it be good or bad. You know, just because your father is not going to pour out his wrath on you doesn't mean that it don't bring a, a lot of godly fear to a saved man to know that he will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. What an awesome thing it is to stand in the presence of God! But my friends, we see a judgment coming. We see the terror of the Lord coming in judgment that He is going to bring down upon mankind. We have seen this judgment in the past. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Genesis 6.13, And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Do you understand this is the terror of the Lord? That word terror means judgment as well. It gives the idea of a judgment. You fear the righteous judge. Do you understand? Who is this God that they're preaching today? Who is this God when they snidely walk by you when you preach the Bible to them and they say, God is love. God is love. Who is this God that destroyed the whole world? Who is this God that listened and heard the cries of man as he wept and he screamed and he was drowning with water in his lungs? Therefore, know we the terror of the Lord. We know the terror of the Lord. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord. Where was that terror? That terror was seen when he destroyed the very creation that he made with his own hands. 
The very creation that He spoke into existence. The very man that He breathed into the nostrils, the breath of life. He filled those nostrils with water and drowned them in their own destruction. Do you understand that's the terror of the Lord? Do you understand that's the same God? Who is this God that they preach as we go out on the streets and we hear them proclaim, who is this God that Billy Graham and these other devils preach? This God with no terror. This God that is just a joke. This God that's not angry at anybody. This God that's not judging anybody. God looked at his own creation and said, I will destroy you. And he not only said he would destroy them, he did destroy them. He drowned the whole world in a flood. Do you understand this is that same God that I preach to you? This is that same God that is in this book that is the terror of the Lord? This is the terror of the Lord. They didn't think of the terror of the Lord, did they? I suppose when Noah entered the ark and God shut the door behind him and they felt a little mist on their face, I suppose they mocked and laughed at the man that went into the door of that ark. I suppose they laughed and they mocked at him and they shook their fist and laughed and said, There is no judgment coming. There is no judgment. God is love. God is love. God is love. God is love. And then when they felt a sprinkle on their face, and when they seen raindrops come down and rain come down, and then when they seen the windows of the uh, the, the the windows of heaven open, and then when they seen the, the the flood, when they seen the fountains of the deep broke up, and the world was beginning to flood, and they watched those around them drown, and they ran to the mountains, and they flee to the mountains to get on top of the mountains to stay alive, just like they will do in this apocalypse that will come. They will do the same thing as God is ready to bring judgment down. They will try to get themselves to the tallest mountain. They will try to escape as far away from the wrath of God as they can, and it will do them no good, because the terror of the Lord will come for them. Because God is a terror. You want to know a terrorist that strikes terror in the heart of man? It is God who is the greatest terrorist of all, who will strike the fear into man's hearts. And let me just tell you something. I don't need to stand here and defend him either. Because he is just and holy to strike fear and terror in the hearts of creation that rebelled against him, that shook their fists at him, that laughed at all his warnings, that mocked him. Then we come to the Tower of Babel. That wicked Antichrist Nimrod who built a kingdom and became a hunter of men's heads and ruled the world from Babel. And had, and was a, and Babylon was the foul of the cage of every foul and unclean spirit. And it dwelt there. And every false mystery religion that ever this world has ever known has come from that tower of Babel, that haven of witchcraft, that haven of spells. And that spirit of that Babylon rests today in Rome. It is the mother of all harlots and the abominations of the earth. And God will destroy it and he will strike terror in their hearts. Who is this God that they preach today? He's not the God of the Bible. Who is this God that they brag about? He loves everyone. He loves everything. God loves everyone, they say over and over again, when God stood at the Tower of Babel and came down, the Bible says. He came down to see the wicked works of man. You know, I'm going to do a study on this coming pretty soon. Every time God comes down, and what happens? Every time God comes down, 
It's the terror of the Lord every time he comes down. Because it's serious when the Bible says God came down to look at their works and to see what they've done. And you know what? Time is ticking away. And he's going to come down again. God came down, and what did he do? With great power, he confounded their languages, and they all left in derision and confusion, and he mixed them, and he he spread them out throughout the whole world. And And then we come to Abraham, who was visited by Christ when God came down to see the works of Sodom and Gomorrah. Who is this God that they preach today that has no terror? Who is this God? But we know him. We know him. We know the terror of the Lord. Because we see him in his word. And he came down to see the wickedness of Sodom and destroy it. And Abraham looked at God and he said, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And God said, yes, I will do right. I'm going to destroy them. Because it's the terror of the Lord. Because we know the terror of the Lord. What did he do? He brought down fire and brimstone. And he destroyed them. This is the God that we preach. This is the God that we live for. This is the God who saved us. The one that has terror and strikes terror in the hearts of people. This God that they try to preach today is like some Grandpa Santa Claus somewhere. But you and I know the terror of the Lord. That's why we go out on the streets and we preach. Because we know what's coming. We know what judgment is coming. And we know they oppose themselves. We know it. And we know that judgment is coming. We see the terror of the Lord because the terror of the Lord is the judgment of God. And there is a white throne judgment coming. Revelation chapter 20, verse number 11. And I saw a great white throne. God loves everybody. God loves everybody, right? Would you read this? Would you just read it? Would you just look at it, what he says here? And I saw a great white throne. And him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. Why'd they flee away? Why didn't they want to see why? Because of the terror of the Lord. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Do you understand this? This is a white throne judgment. There is no turning back. The judge of all the earth will do right. He sits on a white throne and he judges them. And they want to flee away from him. And they don't want, they want to be hid from him. They want to hide themselves from him that sitteth upon the throne. Why? Because great wrath and judgment is upon Because he is a God of terror. And he is to be greatly feared. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. This is the terror of the Lord. Do you understand that? This is the terror of the Lord. This is the judgment of God. This is the God that we preach. That we preach openly and we beg men to repent. Because we know the terror of the Lord. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. We'll get back to some of that judgment and some more of that terror in a little while here. But there's another aspect of this terror of the Lord. 
The Bible says in Genesis 35, 5, And they journeyed, and the terror of God was upon the cities that were round about them, and they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. Why? Because the fear of God was upon them, because they knew that God's power was upon them, and they feared them. That terror is a fear, a fear to quake in fear and shake before the Almighty God. Look at Isaiah chapter 10, verse number 33. Behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, shall lop the bow with terror, and the high ones of stature shall be hewn down, and the haughty shall be humbled. That is the terror of the Lord. Do you think a man will stand in arrogance like we see them stand on the street when we preach the word of God and they shake their fist? And that foul mouthed little degenerate devil that I seen yesterday who said things against Christ's name, who said vile things about God. You think that he will stand in the presence of Almighty God and do that? No, he will quake and he will shake in fear because the terror of the Lord will come upon him. We'll seize him. And that's why we preached to him. That's why I begged him in Christ's stead to be forgiven of his sins, to come to Christ and receive forgiveness and repent of his wickedness because there's an awful judgment coming to you. Say, why do you want to go out and talk to those people? Why don't you just leave them in their own sin, let them die and go to a devil's hell? Why? Because therefore know we the terror of the Lord. I know what's coming for him. I know, as he curses the name of Jesus, what's coming for him. I know the judgment that is coming for him. Hebrews 12, 21, and so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. Moses was the meekest man in the earth, the Bible says. Moses was the prophet of God. Moses accepted in the sight of God, saw God straight, saw God, ate with him right there, ate next to him with the 70 and stood there and he seen the glory of God. But what did he do when he came in the presence of God? Fear and quake. He said the sight was so awful to behold that he could not even look upon it. It brought fear and terror into his heart. Why? Because he saw God and his holiness and who he really is. And it scared him. In Deuteronomy chapter 5, the people, they didn't want to see God. They said, I don't want to see him, Moses. You go over there and talk to him. We don't want to see him. We don't want to see him, Moses. We love him, but we don't want to see him because we're afraid of him. These words the Lord spake unto all your assembly in the mount of the midst of the fire of the cloud and of the thick darkness with a great voice, and he added no more. And he wrote them in two tables of stone and delivered them unto me. And it came to pass, in verse number Deuteronomy 5.23, And it came to pass, when ye heard the voice out of the midst of the darkness, for the mountain did burn with fire, that ye came near unto me, even all the heads of your tribes and your elders. And ye said, Behold, the Lord our God has showed us his glory and his greatness. And we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. We have seen this day that God doth talk with man, and he liveth. Now therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us. If we hear the voice of the Lord our God any more, then we shall die. For who is there of all flesh that has heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of the fire as we have and lived? Go thou near and hear all that the Lord our God shall say. And speak thou unto us all that the Lord our God shall speak unto thee. And we will hear it and do it. He said, we don't want to hear his voice like that. We don't want to be that near him. We can't take that. It's too much for us. The terror of the Lord is too much for us. We don't understand the awesome presence of God and the power of God. It's the terror of the Lord. A man that is walking with God and has seen the power of God, he he is bold, but he's not arrogant. Why? Because he's been with God. He knows the fear of the Lord and the terror of the Lord. 
How about Isaiah? He saw him high and lifted up, and the terror of the Lord drove him to his knees. And they cried around him, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. What did he say? Woe is me, for I am a man with unclean lips. This God that is a consuming fire is a terror to behold. What does that mean, that terror? That which may excite dread and cause extreme fear. I think, I think of extreme fear when I think of the awesome power of God to flood the whole world. The power of God to destroy the earth with fire. The power of the Lord to speak this world into existence and then to destroy it after He did. Who is this God that they preach today that has no terror, that they have no fear for, that they have no, they they, they care not for the fear of the Lord. They have no fear of Him. They think He's some old grandpa up there that's going to grant them everything they want, or some genie up there that's, that's just waiting to please them and to make them happy. That is not the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible is a terror. The Bible says He is greatly to be feared. Exodus 22, verse number 24, And my wrath shall wax hot, and I will kill you with the sword, and your wives shall be widows, and your children fatherless. Do you understand this is the wrath of God? This is the terror of the living God? I'd like you to do some studying sometime. I'd like you to do some word searches on the love of God versus the wrath of God. How about it, friend? Why don't you do some studying on that and see the difference? Because God has a wrath, and I guarantee you His wrath is talked about a lot more than His attribute of love is. Because God loves His own, but the wrath of God abideth on the ungodly and the sinner. Exodus chapter 32 and verse number 10. Now therefore let me alone that my wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make thee of thee a great nation. What did God say? Just let me alone. Just get out of my way, Moses. What was Moses? Moses was a type of Jesus Christ, and he was interceding for them. The Bible says that God is a buckler and a shield. What was Moses doing? Shielding them from God's wrath. He is a picture of Jesus Christ, and he was shielding them from his wrath. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, Numbers 11.33 says, And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. Wait a minute. Who is it? Wait a minute. God is love, right? That's all we ever hear. God is love. God is love. God is love. God is love. Yeah, that God of love just smote some people. He just flooded a whole world, didn't he? He just destroyed a tower in the work of man's hands. And he just put to death a whole lot of people. And there's coming a day when he's going to burn the earth and the whole world with fervent heat. And he's going to melt the elements down. And he's going to cast them into the lake of fire. This is the terror of the Lord. You know, I've heard some preachers say, oh, that's, that's that. I've heard some people say, oh, that's that scary preaching, or that's that preaching that scares men. Good, you need to be afraid. You better be afraid of the terror of the Lord. You better have some fear in you. And if you don't, you better beg God for some. Because he's not this old fat Santa Claus you're trying to make him out to be. You know, I think these people got Buddha and Christ confused. I think they got Buddha and Jehovah confused. I think they look at God like he's Buddha up there. He's the Dalai Lama up in heaven or something like that. Well, he's not. He is a holy, righteous God with terror and wrath. And he is coming again with great power and judgment. Amen. Second Kings 22, 13, Go ye inquire the Lord for me and for the people and for all Judah concerning the words of this book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us, because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book to do according unto all that which is written concerning. <coughs> Job 21, 20, His eyes shall see His destruction, and He shall drink of the wrath of the Almighty. Job 21.30, that the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction. 
they shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. Do you understand what wrath is? It is an uncomparable. You cannot compare the wrath of God to any anger that you have ever seen in your entire life. You think the maddest your parents ever got. You think the maddest you've ever gotten. You think that adds up to the wrath of Almighty God who will burn this earth in His wrath and anger. Psalm 2.12 Kiss the son lest he be angry and he perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Do you get it? Kiss the son. S-O-N The son lest he be angry. There's coming a day and in Psalm 2, we see the, the, the kings of the earth have gathered themselves together to wage war against the prince of princes. And God is going to pour out his wrath. And you know all these fake, phony people that are walking around saying God is love. And that's the only sentence they can say and judge not from the scriptures. That's the only two things that they know. Those guys are going to line up with the Antichrist being filled with that demonic spirit. And they are going to follow him. And they are still going to shake their fists. And they will not repent of their fornications. They will not repent of their wickedness. Because strong delusion shall be... Wait a minute, I thought God was love. How could could God send strong delusion? Do you understand what that means? Do you even get what that means? That means that God is going to send them such strong delusion, they will be so absolutely fooled. You don't. That's the God of the Bible. That's not the God that you've made in your own corruptible image. That's the God of the Bible. Why? Because they've received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. So the terror of the Lord will strike them. God has an anger. People are being lied today. They're being told that God is nothing but love as an entirety to a statement of who God is. David said, O oh Lord, rebuke me not in thy wrath, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. He said, he cast into them the fiercest of his anger, wrath and indignation and trouble by sending evil angels among them. Now, that'll theologically mess up a lot of people right there, that statement, won't it? That God Almighty, the God of love, would send evil angels among them. How about, how about Psalm 90, verse 11? Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. Do you get that? Did you read that? Let me read that again to you. Who knoweth, Psalm 90, 11, who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. Jeremiah 10, 10, but the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and an everlasting king. At his wrath, the earth shall tremble. And the nation shall not be able to abide in his indignation. Who is this God that they preach today? We know the terror of the Lord. We know it. So we, we, we persuade men because we know it to be true. And we know the wrath that is coming. Nahum 1-2. God is jealous and the Lord revengeth. The Lord revengeth, revengeth and is furious. Do you see that? Furious. Hot, fiery anger and wrath. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. The terror of the Lord will be seen in the end. Therefore, know we the terror of the Lord. Look at this, Zephaniah chapter 1, verse number 15. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble. 
and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as the dung. Are you listening? Are you paying attention? He said, I will pour out their, their blood shall be poured out as the dust. That is the judgment that awaits. That is the terror of the Lord that awaits. That's the terror of the Lord that awaits your loved ones. That's the terror of the Lord that awaits the rebellious. The lost, that is the terror of the Lord that awaits them. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath, but the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. Romans chapter 2 verse number 5. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Do you see this? This is where man is today. What do they do? They treasure us up to themselves wrath against the day of wrath. They are building their case against God. And God is building his case against them. And they are treasuring it up. And God is keeping an account. That is the terror of the Lord that is coming. And we know that terror. Ephesians 5, 6, Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. They that have vain uh, professions and empty faith, the wrath of God. They that live their works and deny the truth and be unto every good work reprobate. They that lie and profess to know God, but in works they deny Him being abominable and to every good work reprobate. The wrath is treasuring up against them. Don't you you understand it? The wrath of God is treasuring up against them the terror of the Lord. Remember that next time you look at that hardened loved one that you have and you want to get very angry with them. Or remember that when you're out there on the street and that lost sinner shakes his fist at God and mocks God and you have a fiery exchange with them. Just remember, just remember, these are lost souls that are dying and going to a devil's hell. These are deceived men that are treasuring up wrath upon wrath. And think not of what they say to you. And don't get proud and arrogant and angry because you're something important but stand for your God and preach the truth to them and warn them to flee from the terror to come. They're deceived. Who cares if they call you a name? Who are you? Who cares if they cuss us out? Who are we? Who are we? We're nobodies. We're just, we're servants of the Most High God that come to warn them to flee from the wrath to come. Did we think they would, they would present us with flowers, with roses and with chocolates and they would love us? Did they think that they would, look what they did to the Savior. They cried Hosanna and the next second they were ready to crucify Him, crucify Him, crucify Him, crucify Him. Of course they're going to hate us. Of course they're going to hate our message. God knows their hearts are hardened. God knows they're treasuring up wrath under the day of wrath. God knows what they're doing. But He says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to them and warn them, warn them of the terror of the Lord. Colossians 3, 6, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Oh, I don't think you and I think of the terror of the Lord enough like we should. We we would have more compassion on people. Maybe we would be more compassionate on people. 
I'm not saying we don't reprove them or rebuke them. I'm saying maybe we would be more compassionate when we understand what's coming to them. If we saw their souls and the plight that they're truly in. Isaiah 63, 3, I have trodden the winepress alone. And of the people there was none with me, for I will tread them in mine anger. Do you understand what he's saying? He's going to trample them! He said, I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury. Do you understand? These are your loved ones. This is your family. These are your friends. These are people in the world that we preach to. This might be your mom or your dad. Your brother, your sister. And the terror of the Lord is coming for them and trample them in my fury. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments and I will stain all my raiment. Now stop there for a second and I want to ask you a question. That does not describe... This lovey-dovey Buddha, God in heaven, does it? No, it describes a coming king that is warning men now through the preaching of his cross and through the preaching of this book that they better flee from the wrath to come because when they see him again, he will trample their skulls and he will squirt his blood all over his raiment. Do you understand that? Have you ever seen something like an elephant stomp something to death? You ever seen that? Crush something's skull? That's right. Have you ever seen have you ever seen anything squashed like that? Have you ever seen that where something got caught in a trash compactor, an animal or something, and it was crushed to death? That's what he's talking about. That's the terror of the Lord. Do you understand that? And do you understand he is not going to blink when he does it? He will not shed a tear when he does it! But he will trample them in his fury. Do you understand that? Listen to the words, please. He will trample them in his fury and rage! And he will be justified in doing it. Because he sent his only begotten son... And they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Revelation 15, 7. And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of God who liveth forever and ever. Vials of judgment. Vials filled with wrath. Vials filled with terror and fear. That's what's coming. Wake up. Too many people are stuck in this Disneyland Mickey Mouse gospel garbage. It's not the God of the Bible. It's not. I'm so tired of all the hypocrisy. I'm so tired of seeing it. When you see, when you know the terror of the Lord, when you know it and you understand it, and then I watch and see what people do out there, and I watch everybody along with one billion Catholics get together and have a fake celebration of Jesus a couple days ago, and everybody acts like they really care. Everybody acts like they really care, don't they? Well, where are they today if they care? Why aren't they flooding the churches today? All those people that celebrated the babe. Where are all the increases in offerings and the increases in people and the increases in workers and the increases of laborers in the field? Where are they? They're sitting at home worshiping some other idol on Sunday because it's fake and phony. That's where they're at. You telling me a bunch of lost pagans gather around a tree, add in a bunch of things. I'm talking about lost people, not saved. But they gather around a bunch of things and they join in a celebration and everybody's all together. We're just all celebrating Jesus. Come on. 
I'm just wondering. You may you may be able to fight and argue and defend your little your little your little uh, pagan celebration there, but you think you're going to be able to stand before Almighty God and you're going to be able to say, "Well, God, I did celebrate on Christmas. I did do that." Big deal. It wasn't for me. It was for you. You took an idol, an object. You called it a Christmas tree, and you brought it in, and you, and you used it as a form of worship to me. But then you said you weren't really doing that. But you said this is all about me. So if it's all about me, then that tree is supposed to be all about me, and that is an idol of worship. So which one is it? Either it's all about me, or it's not all about me. You tell me which one it is. Because, buddy, God ain't fooled by any of that garbage. So whatever you sold your mama on, your daddy on, and your little baby on, doesn't make a difference to the God in heaven, because you just told everybody in the world that this is all for Jesus. Okay, so what do trees have to do with worshiping God? Get real. What a bunch of garbage. I, I, I'm just so sick of the games. You know what? I'm going to tell you something. If I had to live my life in that staunch fundamentalism, the way they played their games and everything, I'd have been out of here a long time ago. I'm telling you what. I'd have went to the world. I'd have went ecumenical. I'd have went everywhere. If I didn't have the truth in this book, I don't want any of that garbage they're selling because it's phony. It's fake. It's got nothing. And it's got no power. And I don't want it. I don't want it. I'll resist it till the day I die. I will resist it. I will stand opposed to them. I will because I'm tired of the fake and phony stuff. You know why? Because they're selling a Jesus at Santa Claus and all these people are dying and going to hell and they have no fear of God before their eyes. None. They don't fear God. They're not scared of God at all. They don't have the terror of the Lord. They can't preach this verse. They can't say this because they don't have the terror of the Lord. So why do you think they're not persuading men to the true God of the Bible? They're persuading them some Mickey Mouse Santa Claus garbage. It's got nothing to do with the Scriptures. You're right, I do got something to yell about. I do got something to yell about. I know you don't, so you sit on your pulpit and don't do much at all, and you have no emotion and hardly move. We all know, okay? Because you ain't got nothing to say. You probably stole some notes from some preacher 50 years ago, and you're just using them anyway. I'm telling you, God has a terror, and he has a wrath, and he's coming back again. You know what? I don't have time to play those, those formalistic games. Because I know what's coming. It's coming. And the more games you play, and the more mixture you have with the world, and the more watered-down faith you have, the less people see the true God of the Bible and get saved. Don't sell me that line of garbage that says we got to compromise to get people saved. It does the opposite. Show me one person that ever got saved because you had a Christmas tree. But it's for Jesus. That's a bunch of garbage. Yeah, because that tree is leading people to Jesus. Wow. Okay, I'll tell you what you need to do. Make it real easy for you. Men... Stop being women, number one. Stop acting like a chick. Okay? Okay? Stop acting like a woman. If you know the truth, follow it. Your wife will look over at you maybe and she might be mad at you. But be a man. Tell her she's going to have to get over it because you love Jesus. And you're going to follow Christ. And if she loves Christ, she will follow you even if she doesn't like it. How about that? Does that make you mad, ladies? If it does, then get your heart right with God because you got some rebellion in there because this just sparked a little bit of it and showed you what you have. So just get it right. Am I being mean to you? No. I'm actually picking on the men because they act, they're acting like chicks and not wanting to stand up and do what's right. Oh, but it's all for this reason. No, it's garbage. Listen, the terror of the Lord is coming. And while you play Christmas tree and Mickey Mouse and Santa Claus, people are dying and going to hell. And God's wrath is coming. And he's going to pour it out on this earth. I wasn't planning on going into the whole Christmas thing. It just, I don't know. It just, it just, it just really got to me. The whole thing just, it just, I, I, I see all the, I, 
I'm seeing all the Mickey Mouse. I'm seeing all the games out there. And I'm thinking, okay, fine. We're walking down the streets and contending with people, and, and, and we're confronting them, okay? And 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 you want to dress up like Santa Claus, bring them presents, and act like everything's about Jesus. Do any of these people fear God? No. Do any of these people understand to fear the Lord? No, because you don't know it. Paul said, no, we therefore the terror of the Lord. We persuade men. When you stop playing games, okay, when you stop playing games and get serious, I'm telling you, the Bible, eh, I'm not picking on ladies, I'm really not, because men are worse, okay, they really are. Because, I mean, there's nothing worse than a man that won't stand up for what's right. Because he's scared of a woman. Look into it. It's called an Ahab Jezebel spirit. Okay? Can't do that, folks. You've got to stand for what's right. And I see a lot of silly women that want to do these things, and then men that they're afraid of their wives doing this. Listen, if I've got to be afraid of my wife to serve the Lord, then I'm just going to have to pray that God deals with her. Do you understand that? I'm going to have to pray that God deals with her. See, you would do that? You better believe I would in a heartbeat. Because I know who I serve. That's not always popular, is it? No, but you know what's less popular? You know what will be less fun? You know what won't be very much fun? When I have to watch people go to a devil's hell and burn forever while people are playing Mickey Mouse Santa Claus games in church. You know what? We had 11 men go out yesterday, and they went out there and they hit those streets and they were preaching out there. Glory to God. It's his work, not ours. I mean, we, just, we just obey him and we just follow him, and then he makes it happen. But you know what I, I find fascinating? These are men that are out there contending for the faith. They're preaching. They're, they're, they're trying to save law, see lost sinners get saved and get warned to flee from the wrath to come. No. They're, they're, they're serious and sober-minded, and they want to see somebody get saved. And guess what? I guarantee you, so one of us or two of us made some mistakes yesterday. Man, we didn't handle something right. But you know what? I had some little kid get online, some little, I don't know how old that kid was. It looks like he's about 16 or 17. I don't know. Maybe he stole his dad's computer or something. I don't know. Anyway, he gets online. He tells me that, you know, I, I, you know you've got all those videos on there, and you're doing, you're doing all this wrong. Yeah, so then, I, so then I went over to his YouTube page, and I saw the biggest bunch of garbage that was on there, and I said, you know what, I like what I'm doing with my YouTube page more than you, what you're doing with yours. You know why? Because you haven't said anything about Jesus Christ. You're making Christians look crazy. Hey, let me break it to you, kid. They are crazy. Right. I told him he ought to go. I, I told him he ought to go mind his own business. The little kid should be coming up talking to men, telling them what they're supposed to be doing. Right. You little squirt, get out of here. That's not the right thing to do. Things. Yeah, I know. See, I'm sorry, but there's a soberness that comes to me when I think of the terror of the Lord, and I think how, how, how everybody around you is going to die and go to a devil's hell. Yeah, that strikes a little bit of fear in me, too, and I want to go, I want to go warn people, and I want to be serious about it, and I can't scream too loud, I can't preach too hard, I can't do things too much, I can't do enough to warn you to flee from the wrath to come. I had some guys say, really, flee from the wrath to come? I said, yep, really. Mark 9, 44, where their worm dieth not. How about death and hell? You want to talk about terror? You, want to, you realize that hell has no exits, right? You, you realize that, right? Once you're cast in the lake of fire, you ain't getting out. You get that, right? Once you're there, there's no, yeah, exactly. There's no reset button. That's right. There is no reset button, Nate, is there? There's no reset button on the video game, right? It's not a game. It's real life, and you don't get to start over. You don't get a hundred lives. You can't do a code, kid, and get your life back. Once you're dead, you're dead in hell for all of eternity to be cast in the lake of fire. It's real. This isn't a game. So you forgive me if this church doesn't have a bunch of Mickey Mouse games. Or you line up 16 buckets and throw balls in them. Or we sing little cutesy-wootsy songs to you. 
Why? Because I don't have time for any of that. The world's going to hell. I don't have any time for those games, okay? The whole world's going to hell, and we don't have time for it. We're here to equip the saints of God to wage war against the devil, who's not playing cootsie wootsie little games. He's trying to get your kid hooked on pornography. He's trying to get your kid hooked into witchcraft. He's trying, he's advertising his religion. He's advertising his worship everywhere. But hey, preacher, you just ought to back off and be quiet while they come into the schools, the public school system, and the, and the boys and the girls are all coming together in the same one. We gotta have everybody the same. Nobody can have any distinction. You serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? That's God loves everybody, right? What was wrong with that prophet? What was wrong with John? John didn't get the memo. Who who forgot to give John the memo? I wonder who forgot to give John the memo. Uh, You know, I know, I know. Hey, Jesus corrected him, didn't he? When he came to John, he said, now, John, you just can't use that language. John, I'm love, John. I'm love. See the badge? Love. John, I'm love. I don't know what you're doing, John, but I'm love. I, I didn't get that. Did you, did you see that anywhere where he corrected that? No. What did Jesus say? The same thing he did. <laughs> you vipers. You fox. You murders. You hypocrites. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. You understand? With no exit. You got it? There's no exit. That's, that's just some of the terror of the Lord. That's just some of it. No one could. You, you, could be, you could preach on it for the rest of your life and never cover all of it. I, I wish that I had the words and I could frame them perfectly for you to understand how awful it is. How awful it will be for you to, to for, for those that are playing games with God, for those that resist God, for those that receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. I wish I could explain it to you better. I wish I had it in me to do it. All I can do is depend on the Holy Ghost that He drives the message into your heart wherever you are. Whoever hears this, that you flee from the wrath to come. Amen. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So we persuade men. God is angry with the wicked every day. So when they get angry at us and they revile us, What did we expect? The wrath of God is upon them. What do we need to do? Preach to them. Warn them of the judgment of God. Warn them to flee it. Warn them to turn from it. Did so you believe in scare preaching? You better believe I do. Man, I do. I sure do. My goal is to scare the hell right out of you, and I mean that literally. Very literally. You may not like that language, but it's true. That's my goal. Because your soul is set on the fires of hell right now that are lost and dead in your trespasses and sins. Your soul is absolutely set on the fires of hell. And the terror of the Lord is upon you. The wrath of God is upon those that are lost. And the judgment of God is upon them. And all I can do is beg you to understand that there is a terror of God. And we must persuade men. We must warn them to flee from the wrath to come. And we must not be shaken at their insults. We must not be moved by their insults. We must not be... Be, be shaken and God, and we must not let them get us off our message that God has sent us, the message that He has sent us to give. We must uh, set our face and our head as, a, as an adamant stone, strong and hard, and continue to preach the truth to them and not be swayed by their insults and their hard-heartedness as they treasure up wrath to wrath under the day of destruction. We've got to warn them because the terror of God is real. Those that we know 
are going to be burned up in God's wrath and indignation if they don't repent. Therefore, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you that we do know the terror of the Lord, that you've revealed it to us, Lord, that you saved our souls. But, Lord, we also know there's a great fear that comes upon us when we think of standing before the judgment seat of Christ. Not that we'll be destroyed by it, but that we'll be reproved by it. And all things will be manifest by the fire that's there, and it'll show what we've done and what we've not done for you. Lord, help us to be true to you. Help us to warn them and persuade men before it's too late. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.